everyone you're yeah, welcome back to Yink Sweet Ladies Place once again my name is Yinka in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing us how to draft a princess that bustier top so let's get started for this tutorial I used two years of Ankara fabric and also two years of lining material and my stay this this stay is very soft so I use a very soft stay for this project and also i'll be needing my tailor's ham to iron my cup so the first thing i did was to put my fabric into two folds and then i measure quarter of my bust measurement plus extra five inches and then the length of the fabric is twice my waist length measurement plus extra five inches as well then after that i cut this out then after that i fused my fit stable stay on it and also, I also cut out the lining piece the same way and I also put the fusible stay on it as well. So the next thing now is to place the fabric back into two folds. I'm going to be cutting the front first. Then after that, I'll put the lining into two folds as well. And I'm going to put it on top of the fabric because I like cutting my lining and my main fabric together so that everything can be in the same way so the next thing is to rule my guideline and my guideline for this project is one and a half inch against the normal one inch i usually use so i i rule my guideline and the distance is one and a half inch So the next thing is to measure down the length of my ham hole. I use nine. Then my shoulder to nipple measurement, which is 10.5. Then my underboss length, which is 14. Then my shoulder to waist length, which is 17. Then plus half inch, same allowance. Then after that, I'm going to extend the line. This is my arm hole length, which give me my chest line. Then this is my shoulder to nipple measurement. This is my under bust length, my waist length. Then my seam allowance of half inch. So on my guideline, I'm going to input my shoulder measurement divided by two. My shoulder is 16 by two is eight inches. Then I'm going to measure that same eight inches on my chest line. Then I'm going to really straight. Then after that, I'm going to import three inches standard neck width. Then at the tip of the shoulder, I'm going to go down by one inch. Then I'll connect these two points together so that I can get my shoulder slope. Then I'm going to add 0 0.75 seam allowance to the shoulder. 0 0.75 inch to the shoulder as seam allowance. Now normally I had it, I used to add half inch to the shoulder, but this time around I'm going to add 0 0.75 as the seam allowance on the shoulder. And then when we are sewing this, we are still going to be sewing half inch. So the next thing is to locate the midpoint of my ham hole. Then on that midpoint, I'm going to come in by half inch. Then after that, I'll connect it to the shoulder. Then I'm going to curve it down to the chest line. So the next thing is to input our measurements and we're starting from the folded edge. So on the chest line, we input quarter of my bust measurement that is bust divided by four. I'll make a point and then I'll go to the waistline. I'll input quarter of my waist measurement as well. That is my waist circumference divided by four. So I'll make a point. Then after that, I'll connect the two together. Then after that, I'll go to my nipple position line. I will input my nipple to nipple measurement divided by two plus half inch allowance. And then I'm going to roll it straight to the waistline. 
then after that I'm going to go to the middle of the armhole that's the middle of my armhole you know we already have a mark there before so from there I'm going to connect it to the nipple point So from the nipple point, I'm going to measure one inch upward and also one inch downward. So I'm going to measure one inch downward like that and then one inch upward. That's where my dart legs are going to stop. Then after that, I'm going to measure the distance from my nipple point to my underbust length. Whatever answer you get, you're going to divide it by two and that's what you're going to be using to form the dart for the cupped part of the bustier. So here I have three and a half, half of it is 1.75. I'm going to measure 1.75 on my underbust length and also on my waist length. Then at the other side of the dart, I'm going to measure half inch. So I'll measure half inch on the waist length and also half inch on the underbust length. Then after that, I'll roll it straight down. Then after that, I'm going to connect it again from the underbust to the nipple point. That is one inch below the nipple point. Then I'm going to use the round part of my French cuff to connect from my underbust to the one inch below the nipple point at the other side. So the reason for using the curved part here is to have a rounded shape around this area. So the next thing you want to do now is to move to the mid ham hole and then the width of the dart you use at the underbust, you are going to use the same thing at the mid ham hole. At the underbust, we use 1.75. So I'll measure that 1.75 here as well. Then I'm going to use the round part of the French cuff again to connect it together then after that I'm going to extend the dart leg of this other side by the width of the dart. The width of the dart here is 1.75, so I'm going to increase the dart leg by 1.75. Then the next thing is to use my French cuff to finish off the ham hole. So place it at the extension, then connect it to the chest line to get your ham hole cuff. So the next thing now is to replace our dart. So here the total width of our dart leg is 2.25. Remember we use 1.7 on the cupped part and then half inch at the other side. So that is 2.25. So you put the 2.25 back to the waist measurement and then you connect it back to the bust measurement. So this, this part here now is your dart replacement. This is your dart replacement. So the next thing now is to import your seam allowance. So I'm going to be using two and a half as my seam allowance and I'll put that two and a half on the waist length and also on the chest line. Then after that, I'll connect it together. So this is it. So the distance here is the dart replacement and then the distance here is our seam allowance. This is allowance. Please don't forget to add your own seam allowance. So the next thing now is to input the neck 
measurement so i'm going to be doing a boat neck for this top so from the tip of my shoulder i'm going to be measuring 2.2 inches inward then i'm going to measure from the center of the of the neck i'm going to measure three inches downward then i'll connect these points together then the next thing now is to cut it out Then I'm going to notch the nipple point on this piece. So we're going to keep it aside. Then after that, we're going to cut the remaining side. So I'm done cutting and it looks like this. So if you open it up, this is how it looks. So you're going to have three pieces for the lining and also three pieces for the main body. on we are going to be drafting the back now so place your fabric into two folds and then you rule your guideline then after that you are going to be measuring one and a half inch starting from the beginning like this for your zip allowance Then starting from the guideline, you're going to measure the length of your armhole. I use 9 in front. I'm also going to be using 9 at the back. Then my waist length is 17, but here I'm going to be using 16 for my waist length. Then I'm going to put half inch for my same allowance. So the reason for reducing the waist length here is to make the top to sit very well at the back. And then later on, we are still going to be altering the fronts after joining the darts together. We are still going to be shaping the side so that it can match with this back. So I'm going to be extending the lines now. So the next thing you want to do now is to input your shoulder measurements. The shoulder is 16 divided by 2, that's 8. I'm going to measure that 8 inches. Then after that, I'll roll it. Then the next thing is to place my French cuff, touching the arm O line and also the chest line. I'll get my arm O cuff. Then I'll go back to the shoulder and then I'm going to measure three inches neck width. And then at the tip of the shoulder, I'll come down by one and then I'll connect the points together. Then I'll add half inch to the shoulder for my same allowance. Then I'm going to be using three and a half inch for my neck depth and then I'll still come in by 2.2 .2 inches from the shoulder tip for the neck width like so. Alright, so I'm going to go to the chest line now, input my bust measurement divided by 4 plus 2 inches seam allowance. Then I'll go to the waist measurement, I'll input my waist measurement divided by 4 plus 1 inch that. Then two inches same allowance. Then I'll connect the points together. Then on the waistline, I'm going to go in on the zip allowance side by half inch and then 
I'm going to blend it back like so. Then now you can reshape your zip allowance. So from the zip allowance, I'm going to go in by half so that I can replace that half inch that I took away earlier. And don't forget to replace this half inch back to the side seam. Then I'm going to be finishing the neckline. I'll just connect the points that I have there together. Then I'm going to cut this out. So after cutting it out, I'm going to notch the zip allowance. Then I will notch my dust that position. Your dart position is your nipple to nipple distance divided by two. And then you are going to measure one inch below your chest line. That's where your dart leg is going to stop for the back. So you're going to be measuring half inch that on both sides of this line. And then you connect them together. So don't forget to transfer the dart to the other side. So I'm going to be cutting my peplum now and I'm cutting 720 degree peplum for this top. So first I'll put my fabric into two fold. After that I'll fold it into four. Then after that I'll fold it. You can see the fabric is already folded into four. Then after that, I'll fold it downward into eight. I've explained how to cut this type of peplum in my previous tutorial. Please kindly watch the video so that you can understand. So that we don't pr prolong this tutorial unnecessarily. So kindly watch that video. I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So I'm done cutting my peplum. So I have two pieces for the main fabric and also I have two pieces for the lining piece. So the next thing I'm going to also do is to fuse the stay on the lining of the peplum and also the body of the peplum as well. Like I said earlier, I'm using a very soft stay. You can see it's very soft. Here in Abuja, we call it paper gum. So if you just tell them in the market where they sell tailoring material, they will give it to you. It's a very soft stay. It has a very soft texture. So I'm just going to iron on my stay. Then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so I'm done attaching the stay on the peplum and I also attach it to the lining and then I've cut the side of the circle so I, I'll be able to join them together. So the next thing now is to cut my sleeve. So moving on, we are going to be sewing our top now. So I'll be working with the front part first. So this is the front part of the of the top and this is the main body and we have three pieces so we are going to be joining it to become one that's the first step so you place the right side of the side panel to the center panel 
right side facing each other and then you are going to stitch it together with half inch and note you're starting from the waistline starting your joining from the waistline then when you're done with one side you repeat the same thing to the second side so after that you are going to notch the dart just notch it's very important that you notch the the sewing of the dart together you just cut it but you are not going to cut to the joining so after that you're going to do the same thing to the lining then you notch it as well so the next thing is to sew the back just sew your dart in so this is the back I'm done sewing my dart so the next thing I'm going to do now is to use lining to turn the main fabric so you place the right side of the lining to the right side of the fabric and then you're going to sew all around starting from the neckline the side seam but you're not going to be sewing it on the ham hole and also on the waistline so you're basically sewing it on the zip allowance the neckline and also the side seam that's all then after that you're going to notch the neckline just put some small, small cut on the neckline like that so when you're done with one side you do the same thing to the other side you know we have two pieces for the back so you keep them aside then you move to the peplum like I said I've cut open the two circles so I'm going to join them together to become one so I'll place them on top of each other right side to right side then I'll join the sides I'll join the side with half inch allowance so this is it I'm done joining it together and it's into one single piece now so the next thing you want to do now is to match the joining together so this journey will become your side seams so match them together you can see this is the journey on one side and this is the journey on the other side so you match them together then you slit open one side you can see i'll slit this part open so my two joining is are going to be my side seam then this place i am cutting open now will be my zip side so i'll also repeat the same thing to the lining so after joining the lining together in the same way the next i'm going to do now is to use the lining to turn the peplum so i'm going to sew it all around with half inch seam allowance so when you're done joining the lining with the main fabric together you're going to notch it as well so you need to notch it all around then when you're done notching it you're going to push all your seam allowance towards the lining part then you're going to top stitch it this is very important so that your peplum can lay flat and also it will prevent the lining from coming out when you're wearing your top so that the lining will not be showing underneath the main dress uh, underneath the main top so this top station we have to keep the lining in place so after top station is this is how it looks so the next thing now is to close the zip allowance side so you are going to place them together like this and then you are going to stitch it when you are done with one side you do the same thing to the other side So after that you bring it to the right side so the next thing i'm going to do now is to fold like about one yard of the stay i'll just fold it like the way i'm showing you now and stack it on top of each other then i'll fold it like just the way i'm showing you so when you're done 
you are going to now measure the distance from your nipple point to your under bust. The distance from my nipple point to my under bust is three and a half. I'm going to measure that three and a half and I'll rotate the three and a half all around just the way I'm showing you now. That is my bust radius and I'm going to cut it out. This is what we are going to be using to pad the bust area of our top. So the more circles you cut out, the more structured the bust area is going to be. So I'm going to be using my tailor's hand first to open up my dart. So I will just open my dart line like I'm showing you now. Open the same allowance of the dart. And then when you're done opening it, you're going to cut a strip out of the stay again. And you iron it on top of it. This way, allow to keep the dart that you already iron flat to be in place. So it doesn't roll back. So whatever you're doing to one side of the dart, you're going to do to the second side. So this is how it looks now after using the strip to cover it up. So the next thing now is to use the round part of the tailor's ham to do the bust area. You can also use the uh, tailor's ball, like the one that is on the table now. You can use it as well. Anyone you have out of the two, it's fine. So you place this the circle that you already cut out from the stay on the nipple points like I'm showing you and you are going to be using your iron to iron it down. You are going to be stacking it on top of each other. Um, the number of circles you put on one boss is say, the same number of circles you are going to put on the other side. Then after that you turn it to the right side and then you keep molding it. So this is how we pad the bust area. You can either use this method or you put wooden, but we no longer use wooden. So this is what we use now and this is how it's going to look when you're done from the wrong side. You can see the way it's looking. And if you turn it to the right side, this is how it looks. So if you want it to be more structured, you keep stacking the circle on top of the bust point. Then you're going to repeat the same thing to the lining. Whatever you do on the main body, you're going to do the same thing on the lining. You can see the way it's looking. After putting the stay, if you have this type of wrinkle on the right side of the lining, you need to put the ball inside again and you iron it smooth from the right side so that it will be smooth. There will be no fold. Make it smooth, build it, put your steam, and then if you don't have steam iron, just use water to wet it and then you iron it. But if you have steam iron, just apply your, your steam and then let everything be nicely done. So you can see how smooth it is now. So the next thing now is to turn the back of the top to the right side and you are going to iron it as well. So you're going to be ironing it. So when you're done with the back, you're going to be ironing the peplum. So this is the peplum. You're going to iron it flat as well. So the next thing you want to do now is to reshape the side of the front. So you put the lining down and then you put the main fabric inside. You align them properly. Let them align together very well. Then you place it on a flat surface. Then starting from the waistline, you measure one inch upward. Then you use your ruler and blend it towards the front like this. Then after that you trim it. So after opening it up, it looks like this. So the next thing you are going to be doing now is to use the front lining to turn the front bodies. So match them together right side facing each other. And then you're going to stitch the neck together first. You stitch the neck together with quarter inch. So 
so when you're done stitching the neckline you're going to notch the neckline just put a small small cut around the neckline like that then after that you're going to stitch the sides together you, do, you join the side together with half inch when you're done with one side you turn to the other side and then you join together as well with half inch So when that is done, you are going to bring it to the right side. Then after bringing it to the right side, you are going to be re-ironing it so that it can lay flat by the neck and the sides. So the next thing now is to take your peplum and then you are going to stitch the lining together with the main fabric on the waist area then after that you will trim the excess of the lining away as well by the time you finish doing it like this you will have that the lining will be like a quarter inch more than the main fabric so you just trim it off all right so we are going to be joining the front to the back now so you take the back you put the right side of the back on top of the right side of the front just match them together right side facing each other like so then you take the front and the back you match them together at the shoulder right side facing right side then you are going to be opening up the lining piece of the back then you you're going to be wrapping it around the front like this this way the front is in between the main fabric of the back and the lining then you are going to be joining the shoulders together with half inch same allowance so by the time you open it up it looks like this can you see it looks like this so you repeat the same thing to the second side match them together right side to right side open up the back lining and wrap it around the front So the front is sandwiched between the main fabric of the back and the lining. Then you join the shoulders together with half inch. So when that is done, it looks like this. So the next thing you want to do now is to place the front together. Just the way I'm showing you. Because sometimes the, at the ham hole, the side panel may extend a little more than the center panel. Then you're going to reshape the side again just a little just look at the way i'm doing it sometimes it will not pass but sometimes it can be more than by quarter inch so just reshape the arm all side so i'm showing you this step because in case you have the same experience it won't be strange to you so you can see the way it's looking now so the next thing you want to do now is to attach your sleeve i believe we know how to fix sleeve now I've been doing this in all of my previous video so you match the center notch of the sleeve with the shoulder joining and then you're going to stitch it to the armhole so when you're done with one side you turn it to the other side and then you stitch it as well then don't forget to add the sleeve to the other side of the armhole so moving on now the next thing you want to do now is to close the side and we're going to be doing that from the zip allowance side and you know we already know our zip allowance so the next thing i'm going to do now is just to roll my zip allowance upward towards the neckline starting from that notched place we notch our zip allowance our zip allowance is one and a half inch but we already use half inch to join the lining with the bodies so 
its remaining one inch and then you are going to roll it at the other side as well there is notch there so just follow your notch and roll it straight to the neckline so the next thing you want to do now is to measure quarter of your bust measurement so starting from the zip allowance you measure quarter of your bust measurement towards the armhole side then whatever that gives you you are going to subtract half inch from it my cut the quarter of my bust measurement is 10 minus half will be nine and a half so i'm going to measure nine and a half then on the waistline you are going to put quarter of your waist measurement exactly quarter of your waist measurement you are not going to subtract anything on the waistline so the quarter of my waist measurement is eight inches so i'll mark it and i'll connect the two points together then i'll repeat the same thing to the second side on the on the armhole side i will measure quarter of my bust measurement minus half inch then i'll measure quarter of my waist measurement on the waistline as well and then i'll connect it together So the next thing you want to do now is to fold the front together with the back. Then starting from the sleeve part, you are going to sew it close, following your shock. So when you are done, you turn to the other side. This time around, for it to be easy for you to sew you are going to be starting from the waistline and then you are going to sew it close following your shock so this is how it looks now from the right side this is how it looks so the next thing you want to do now is to attach your peplum so you are going to be placing your peplum on top of it starting from the zip allowance right side to right side and then if you calculate the radius of your peplum very well everything is going to be the same thing with the waist measurement so everything will just align without any excess so you're going to stitch it together with half inch same allowance You really, you really need to watch the video of how to cut this uh, 720 peplum. I've, I've done the tutorial about two weeks ago. I'm going to definitely leave the link in the description box. So I'm done attaching the peplum. And this is how my top is looking. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to fix my zip and then we are done. Then you are going to be weaving this joining here. So you just weave that joining and then the next is to just attach the zip. So I'm going to place the right side of my zip to the right side of my top. And then following my zip allowance, I'm going to stitch the zip to the top. So I'm done with one side now. The next thing is to sew the other side. So this time around, I'm starting from the lower part of the top. And then following my zip allowance again, I'm going to stitch it together. So I'm done attaching my zipper. So the next thing is to bring it to the right side. So that I can finish the zipper at the neck area okay so this is my zipper i'm going to open it up then the ss is above the neckline i'm going to fold it downward and then put it at the back of the seam allowance and then i'm going to top stitch on it when you're done with one side you repeat the same thing to the other side
so this is it my top is ready and this is how it's looking and this is how it looks from the inside so the excess is right behind the zip allowance if you like you can cut it off or you leave it there anyone you choose to do so that's it the top is ready And here is our beautiful top. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.